About a year ago, I made a video covering a Warlock exotic chess piece that had a lot of potential in the game going into the future. That chess piece was Sanguini Fettuccini Squidward Tortellini. <clears throat> Sanguine Alchemy had the unique ability to feed into not one, but two different ammo surges for you during a boss damage phase. For example, let's say you had an Arc Heavy such as Hothead, and then an Energy Sniper such as Ikelos Sniper. The way Alchemy's potential was set up previously was, you put it on with Well, and then in your boots you would put three Arc Surge mods to pump your Heavy, in this case Hothead, then Sanguine Alchemy would activate when you Rift or Well, and feed you two Solar Surges for your Sniper. That way when you rotate between your Heavy and your Sniper, you would get Surge numbers on both of them. But at the time, that's all that was, just potential in certain weapon rotations. These days, Sanguine Alchemy got a little bit of a tweak, and now all of a sudden, it's actually pretty damn good. Now this time around, you can still do the previous interaction that I mentioned with two different weapon types, but now Sanguine Alchemy gives you a times 4 weapon surge on whatever super you are matching. So you match a super with your heavy, and your heavy will have an X4 surge, and then you can feed whatever you want into your boots. Now for those of you that don't know what Sanguine Alchemy does, the ability states, while standing in any rift, damaging a target will mark it. You deal extra damage to mark targets and gain an additional bonus damage with weapons that have a matching damage type of your equipped super. And then weapon final blows while standing in any rift causes the rift's cooldown to extend its duration, but normally we don't care about that because you can use Well of Radiance as your big damage phase rift. Here's a quick clip to demonstrate what I mean with this build. Now this clip is going to be versus the Corrupted Puppeteer, the latest boss in Destiny. The thing to know here is that this is a terribly scuffed damage phase for me, and you'll still see that in the end I get some pretty silly damage numbers for this. Also, it is going to be sped up because the Corrupted Puppeteer is like a 2 minute damage phase and you don't need to watch the full 10 minutes, so here's that. Oh, and also this is still a 1 phase on the Corrupted Puppeteer with no Titans. Oh well. I got the tonic again. I'm such a bot, dude. Well done. Indeed. Get that bomb. Right. Got 19 shots and a full missile load. <clears throat> now, quick swap already. I have no fucking armor towards me. Why did I just run and switch? I'm a bottom still I f***ing threw and I still got 6.6. .6. So you might have noticed a few things there. First, I popped my Well of Radiance and then I switched to Arc. This is because I was using an Arc Heavy, which is Grand Overture in this case, and I wanted the X4 Surge Boost on that. So the way Sanguine works is it doesn't care what your initial super is for when you pop your Rift, or Well in this case. It just cares on what your currently equipped super is. So you can pop Well of Radiance, then switch to whatever element you want, and it'll give you the surge boost to that element. In this case, it was arc. And in a hypothetical scenario, if I wanted to increase the damage of my lost signal, I could put stasis surge mods on my boots, and that way, lost signal would get a damage bonus on top of Grand Overture already having an X4 boost. And as I mentioned previously, I had a pretty scuffed damage phase, and despite all of my mistakes, in the end, I still put up 6.6 .6 million worth of damage. Now imagine if Chaos Reach was actually a viable super, I would have had an extra super at the end there to pop off on the boss as well for extra damage. For a support player, that's pretty damn good damage. Not only are you providing a damage boost to everyone with Well of Radiance, but then you're also cranking out top damage on your own. And by the way, not to derail the build for a second here, but Grand Overture, which is going to be featured in this build video too, is just an absolute monster this episode. The synergy that it has with the tonic and artifact system is so absurd as you'll see throughout the video. It pumps out insane damage to the point where it can keep up with the best grenade launchers in the game that also came out this episode, that being Chill Inhibitor and Bittersweet. Indeed.
There you go. 5.587 million. So a question you might be having by this point is, do you have to load out swap to make this build work? And the answer is no, absolutely not. If you want to stay on a particular subclass, you can the entire time. So for example, if you just want to stay on well and be solar, that's totally fine. You could whip out something like Whisper of the Worm or Apex Predator or any other solar weapon that you want. But on the flip side, it would be disingenuous for me to not mention the benefits of the loadout swap. So the other two options you have is if you're the only warlock, you start on well, you pop well, and then whatever color your heavy is, you switch to that subclass element. So in the footage you've been seeing, Arc is a popular choice, so I would switch to Stormcaller. Or you could be the second warlock on your fire team, and you could start on an offensive super and then swap to whatever element that you want. So another example here is going to be I start on Nova Bomb, and then I switch to Arc to match the element of my Heavy. That way, I get an offensive super off for big damage. Then I switch to my X4 Surge weapon to continue the big damage. Another good point is that this build can be ran either solo or with a fire team. So if you want to go for your, let's say, solo flawless with this build, you totally can. And another thing that helps that is the artifact mod can cause a reload from this episode. So this states, while using any grenade launcher to damage a boss, a champion or just any yellow bar or to break a shield you will weaken them so you can freely debuff anyone you want when you're playing solo and by utilizing the tonic system if you use the tonic for this artifact mod you gain the ability for your grenade launchers to then reload your stowed weapons when you damage them with said grenade launcher a good example of this would be with grand overture so if you've used grand overture before you know its most annoying weakness is that it takes 12 years to reload. By utilizing this artifact mod with any GL, you bypass that entirely. You build your 20 missiles, shoot it on the boss to do massive burst damage, shoot your 19 next missiles to load it back up, swap to Lost Signal or any other GL, shoot that GL, weaken the boss, also reload your stowed weapons, which is Grand Overture, now you're back to 20 shots and you can fire off your missiles once again and repeat the process without ever going into the manual reload animation and taking 12 years to reload. Now in terms of ability build crafting, if you're swapping between elements during a boss damage phase, none of that really matters to you because once you swap you lose those other abilities, right? But if you are staying on one element, for example if you're just staying on well or you're starting on Nova and you're ending on Nova, then I will put up the images for that right now. So here's the prismatic loadout. We have Phoenix Dive and Vortex Grenade. Melee is Arcane Needle, but it could be whatever, really. For Aspects, we have Feed the Void for Devour, and then Bleak Watcher to apply Stasis in the event that we want to utilize our Facet of Courage, which does more ability damage for your light abilities when you have a Darkness debuff on an enemy. Then for the rest of the fragments, we have Grace, in case you want to build up your prismatic really quickly. Facet of Dawn to give you Radiant when you do melee, and then depending on your loadout, Facet of Ruin to make the Stasis Shatter or Solar Ignition do more damage. Although this could be swapped out for something else right now, especially because Ignitions are bugged. And then Facet of Command is also really good because between your Prismatic Grenade and also Bleak Watcher, this will proc to then also auto-reload your ammo in the event that you're not using the GL Tonic slash Artifact mod or you're watching this in the future and that doesn't even exist anymore. And here is the Well of Radiant setup. So in Aspects, I have Touch of Flame and Icarus Dash, but if you wanted to swap one of these out for Helion or even Heat Rises, you totally could, it wouldn't really change anything. The Grenade is Healing Grenade, the Melee is Celestial Fire, although you could use Snap for close range bosses to get a free Ignition off. For Fragments, we have Ember of Benevolence, so this is a two-parter. Number one is you regen your abilities very quickly when utilizing this with your teammates, but also it's a free gateway to pop your healing grenade and your phoenix knife to get double resto and then also get them back quickly for another example or scenario where you would need them number two is ember of imperium your solar weapons and your abilities extend the duration of resto and radiance ember of solace solace however you pronounce this radiant and resto effects apply to have an increased duration and then finally ember of torches to get radiant off of our melee and lastly, to wrap this up, armor mods. So you don't need anything special in terms of armor mods for this build. I will, of course, include a dim link down in the description below in case you want to check out the full build, which will include all the mods. But generally, you want to put on mods that are pretty standard for builds like this. Things like a siphon mod to get your orbs of power and load up on armor charges. Heavy ammo finder to get more heavy ammo for whatever you're using. Radiant light for when you pop your well to give your teammates an armor charge. 
you have loader mods in your gloves to reload whatever your heavy is that much faster in the event that you have to actually reload grand overture at least you have some loader mods just in case in your chest you go with the combination of resist slash reserves because you want to maximize the heavy damage potential so i typically run at least one reserve for my heavy in my chest you can do whatever you'd like though in your boots as we've mentioned previously in the video you can put boot mods for your secondary weapon in your rotation so whatever your heavy is that's covered by sanguine so your boots will cover either your kinetic slot or your energy slot depending on what you're using and then lastly in your class item you want to have time dilation to extend your armor charges in the event of a long boss damage phase powerful attraction for when you phoenix dive you could pick up multiple orbs around you instead of having to actually walk to them and then bomber to reduce the grenade cooldown when using your class ability in case you're using like a healing grenade but that is it for the build i highly recommend that warlock mains try this out but hey you can do what you want i'm not your dad and maybe down the line i'll do a little uh, sanguine plus grand overture boss bake video we'll see how this does we'll see in the meantime if you did enjoy the video or the build please consider subscribing today it does help the channel grow and is much appreciated and if you want to go the extra mile you can leave a like and a comment below as well. If you don't know what to comment, you can leave Sanguine Alchemy as the comment. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.